Welcome to High Speed Serial Links. I am Dr. C. S. Chavit. In this lecture, we will learn about impulse transfer function of a channel. Every channel can be defined to have a small transfer function which can be identified by passing a single bit of information or an impulse through it. The output of the channel will have a certain characteristic of how this single input pulse bit has come through and that output characteristic will inform the nature of the channel. In this case, when you transmit a impulse, what does an impulse mean? An impulse is a pulse having a finite time constant Ts or on time having an amplitude A0. When you transmit to this channel, the amplitude gets updated to A0 bar, which could be a scaled up or a scaled down version. And the time pulse might get extended beyond the symbol Ts time. That is called inter symbol interference, meaning it is taking more than one bit time for the energy to be contained. So let us take this discussion forward with respect to the total amount of energy in the system. Let the energy present within this pulse be sent into the channel input. So this would be the input single pulse with a symbol time Ts or pulse time Ts. Now this input when it passes through the channel gets transformed and comes out in this manner. What does this mean? The total amount of energy present within this pulse has now been spread widely and come here. It is a point that you have to understand that the energy has to almost remain the same apart from what is dissipated in the noise. The noise will remain this, the value will remain the same. So now this total energy of this bit has now got transferred into a bit value here. How do you now classify how many symbols this energy has spread through? The way to do that is, easiest way to do is try and recreate this symbol pulse and do its same on the nearby places also. So do you get to know that the symbol time, how many symbol times it has gone through and what is its impact. So in this particular case, the energy spread has happened over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 TS spread. So a single energy has spread to 5 cells or 5 timestamps or 5 symbol times. This is called inter symbol interference. That means one symbol is interfering with the performance of five symbols, either one before or after. Now, how do you identify how many before, how many after and what are the naming conventions for that? So the naming conventions are the maximum energy that is present is going to be a reference and this we call as the main symbol point. The one before it is called pre, that is before the main. And the symbols after the main are called post. Now the main, pre and post are there. And this will define what is the number of symbols. In this particular case, we have main has got one. 
there is one pre and three post symbols that this particular channel is spreading the energy to find out what is the amount of energy let us try and average the strength in each of these so the main has got one strength indicated by this blue cursor second the average in the precursor is identified with this blue cursor here there are three averages found at these places and these would be the pre main and post cursors based upon which the dfe will perform its action and it is this region of post that dfe will have a sphere of influence so the dfe design is controlled by what it sees in these three channels so you now have three factors one is the main coefficient called c0 then there is one pre coefficient which we will call as c minus 1 and there are the post coefficient which we would call what is the value the coefficient would be the effective value that is seen at this voltage and that would be c1 c2 and c3 so if we define what is the total energy dissipated from the input pulse here the definition can be given as follows they would say c minus 1 factor c0 c1 c2 and c3 this is called the total inter symbol interference spread that you will observe and pursue the next step of action on how to correct this one now what is the aim on how to correct this the aim to correct this performance is all the yellow color energy that you see in this place has to be pushed into the pre activity so that will be the aim of the equalization activity that we want to do so we will transform the above graph into a graph that looks little better off where all the energy has now been either concentrated in or above them says that the energy is as similar to what you had at the input level so this would be the aim to get the almost the entire energy into this place so that would be the aim of the equalization so equalization will happen in two places one at the rx side you will have the dfe so this would be the on the rx side and on the pre side will be on the tx where we will do the pre equalization so we will try and push this energy back here and push these three energy bins back into the center so we will try and do something called energy consolidation of each bit to go inside so such that this maximum energy is rebrought at the output after the equalization states so in this case you may not be able to get 100% energy back but we will try to get at least 80 to 90% such that decision making happens so what will be the outcome the decision making of the symbol happens clearly and that is enabled by reducing the impact of reducing the energy from the coefficients or bit symbols c1 c2 c3 so the more you reduce c1 c2 c3 the decision making will get better 
to identify what kind of a symbol is it is it a zero or a one or you do not make false one when it has supposed to be zero in this case so that is the aim to avoid this so impulse transfer function of a channel let me summarize will give you information about what is the nature of equalization that needs to be followed what are the pre main and post cursors that will come how the decision making of the symbol will get impacted and will be taken through 